It gives Circus 10. This is Avon sales representative makeup tactics. Why did that happen then? What happened there then? What was that about then? Hello everyone, welcome back, thank you so, so much for joining me. Today we are doing a reaction video to one of the incredible Judy D's videos. Every time one of her videos comes out, you are all in my messages, I need to watch it. So I have saved this one um, to watch with you all. Do go and check out her whole video, which I'll link down below because I'm not gonna put the whole thing in here. Do you consider subscribing? Do me a favor right now and give this video a thumbs up. And I wanna know your opinions in the comments down below throughout this video. Don't be scared to comment more than once. <laughs> and as I always like to say in these videos, creativity and individuality have no rules, but makeup most definitely has a theory, especially when you're charging people for it. Okay. Let's have a look. Okay, so straight up looks reasonably organized. It's, oh, that chair has a headrest. I've never seen that before. That's a good chair. Now, if you've ever seen some of Julie D's videos before, they have her laying on beds, chairs with no backs to it, the floor, things where she shouldn't be laying on. Why is that important? You know what, it's good to be face on to your client. She should probably face the mirror. I hope they turn her to face the mirror so she can see as you go along. But also because uh, you want them to be comfortable, basically. Wow, this one? This one was a pretty interesting one, let's say. Today's makeup artist is an actual makeup artist, first of all. Um, <laughs> that shouldn't be a clarification, but on this channel, it is a viable piece of information that's necessary to say. <laughs> We're actually getting a pretty funky makeup look. He wanted to add glitter. That's that's all I know. And that's the one thing I interfered in. I did not want glitter because that hurts. Glitter is the enemy. This makeup was not cheap. It was actually $70, but it was professional. $70, in my opinion, isn't bad for makeup if it's done by a professional and includes lashes. We even sat in a professional makeup chair. Professional makeup chair. You'd think the professional chair came with a professional service, but that's debatable. I mean, he did prep my skin and he did my eyebrows. All was good. I just noticed he was a bit more rough. I mean, I was thinking, you know, at that price point, we would get a more chill makeup artist, but no. Okay, so I, eyebrows not bad. You know what I really like in an eyebrow is when you can still see movement and lines and texture in, oh, I haven't done my eyebrows. Um, and you can see in her brow, you can see some individual hairs, there's still some shape to it. It's nice. It's her eyebrow, but structured. And this, Linda's, was the start of our pre- I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. The claw. The claw hand holding onto here, doing this here. I've told you all about the time I've seen someone do this too, right? It is so unprofessional, uncomfortable, and just not a good move. Also, you could, when you're moving a client's face around, like, right? You could, there's many things you can do. Just little taps like this. Move your brush, <laughs> you know? But when you're moving the head, like, it's just, it's not, it's not good. He does end up depending on me and here's the deal right you can you can lift the brow while you're doing the eye makeup and here's the deal you can lift the brow while you're doing eye makeup just with one finger you don't have to hold the whole head and stretch the whole head back like tapes you know for most of the makeup and by that i mean like literally physically depending on me like he's putting most of his weight on my head and my face and yeah i mean that the base the eye base is darker than her skin tone under the brow, right, so we're gonna do eye makeup on top of it, fine, whatever, but under the brow, lighter. Give it a bit of highlight, because if it's, un if if you have beautiful eye makeup, right, imagine if this line here was just darker than my skin tone. You're like, what the fuck, what are you, do what are you doing there then? So we've got Barbie pink, violet purple, That's a beauty therapist. This makeup artist learned beauty therapy. I can tell because they stack colors next to each other like this and they blend. <laughs> what I what I would have done personally is, well, one, I would have started, started with a darker color. I like to go from dark to light, but that isn't, that isn't like, you don't have to do that. That's not a rule. But in this case, 
blending the pink into the purple just in a straight line like this. Pink and purple, when they blend out, they blend out. So I wouldn't have gone in with the shape. I would have done little bits at a time and then built it up. Because now this is this is gonna get smudgy. That's word, smudgy. And a deep navy blue. Linda's I I'm looking like a unicorn. I'm looking like every little girl. Okay, so this blue blends beautifully into that purple. Nice. Why have we not blended that purple into that pink? And it's dead easy. You can take the brush you put the pink on with no other products and just tap, just tap down the middle there. Done. Really simple. But can you see now we have this solid line? There's no, nothing on your eye makeup should be a solid line unless it's a cut crease or liquid liner. I do think they're very pigmented. It's a nice surprise. I mean, surprise, it shouldn't be a surprise if there was a professional makeup chair. My concern wasn't with the colors. My concern was with the way man's tried to line my lower lash line. My God, please, you know, we have to ban glitter and we have to ban Q-tips. Like why, why yeah. are Q-tips? I, again, this is a, this is a very, it's okay. So if any of you took any kind of makeup course or beauty course, early 2000s, late 90s, you all know Q-tips were the thing. <laughs> Don't have a brush? That's fine. Q-tip, you know? So I think it's, I think it's really important as a makeup artist to keep updating your knowledge and your experience. Are you in your 30s now? Is, do you know a makeup artist who's really good, who's like early 20s, 19? Have them teach you a little bit. No shame. No shame. There's nothing wrong with updating your knowledge all the time. Imagine like you're a car mechanic from the 1940s and then suddenly you're in 1997 and you haven't updated your knowledge ever since then. You know what I mean? That's quite a time gap, but you know what I mean. And like they're not even, they're not even healthy for your ears. Why, why do they still exist? Let's just invent something instead of Q-tips. Like that's actually healthy. Please. No, oh, okay. Why? Okay, so we uh, <laughs> So when, when, okay, so with a Q-tip, it's a solid, really firm tip, as gentle as they claim they're gonna be. Like Judy said, you can't use them in your ears, so what are we doing? That's not gonna blend well. It's gonna apply the product really heavy. All you have to do is get a small brush, a small little brush like this, looks like a Q-tip, but it has movement to it, and just blend it across. That's all. Or wipe down that pink brush you use. You know, this is Avon sales representative makeup tactics. Never mind, it exists. It's called a brush. <laughs> right. I don't appreciate. I don't appreciate cotton in my eyeball. No. Especially when I'm paying this number, and especially when I'm sitting in a professional makeup chair. <laughs> Why did that happen, Ben? What happened there, Ben? What was that about, Ben? That, that gold there, if you just use flesh colour powder, would have blended it beautifully, we would be absolutely fine. Like, you, like on the outside with the blue. Just talking about this brow, just for one second, I would fill in underneath here a little bit more. But you see this gap here and on the outside edge here, just to bring the arch further out a little bit, especially if we're elongating the brow here. You don't want to stop here and have a massive tail. Just bring it out a tiny bit further. So why, so why can we blend the purple and the blue but not the pink and the purple? What's the deal there? What, do we want a solid line? Because it doesn't look right. It gives Circus 10. Why is this thumb on her nose? Why, if, if, you, if you have um, sturdiness, no, what's it called? Trouble with how sturdy you are, Find something else to lean on. The chair, your hip, you know, a friend, not the client. Mmm. Oh. No, 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 no. Instantly stop. Instantly stop. Spatula. Spatula. Take out some of the product onto a palette or the back of a clean hand, if you so wish. And you work from there. You, you, 
that's unhygienic and unprofessional and if somebody took that out of their kit and it looked like that i would be devastated that was going to touch my face please clean it so let's take a moment let's take a moment to appreciate the perfection of this foundation it is the perfect shade literally no difference between my face and my neck right now and yeah it is pretty heavy so it's full coverage and yet there's no difference so that's remarkable i'm so happy take a moment and pray lindas that it does not oxidize it doesn't turn orange that it stays that way it is quite yellow for her skin we didn't pray hard enough we did not pray hard enough i don't know how i don't know how really it's it's actual magic right here. What happened? <laughs> what happened? A lot of heavy creams do tend to oxidize and especially if it's the wrong shade. This is quite yellow. You can see that her skin undertone here. I would verge on neutral or yeah, it can be a little bit yellow, but this is, this is too yellow. You can see the yellowness in comparison. She has some surface redness, but that doesn't necessarily mean that her skin tone is pink. The undertone looks a little bit more neutral to me. One thing that I feared, actually, was when my makeup artist got excited. So he does become extremely heavy-handed. <laughs> I was getting whooped. We, we lack precision here. We can see there's a bit going through the eyebrow right here. So that's you and kind of that was just kind of everywhere it was spot treating literally spot 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 as in spot the product not blemishes spot treating where you just tap over certain areas <laughs> unless you walk around like this there's no reason to do but your face will move if you do this you will do this your face is going to move around plain face how your face is all the time look straightforward apply the product also when you do your bronzer like this it makes it look like you haven't taken your foundation all the way up to the head judy does not need this for her face shape around the hairline around the edges here maybe to elongate the face there but unnecessary. We need to bear in mind people's face shapes when we're doing makeup. Wait, I'm wait, 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 wait. So we're putting powder on top of this. Have we blended it? Because we're going to set this how it is now. That, all of that needed more blending. It all needed more blending. It's lines, lines on the face. Unhygienic, disposable. You need a disposable, please. Okay, let's see. Let's just see. It's okay. Oh, I thought that was gonna smudge on my lip. Okay. Very unhygienic. Those spongy things, very unhygienic. In a kit. Sponge in the kit shouldn't be a thing that hangs around. You use with disposable sponges and that's it. <laughs> The way this is all gonna sit, the texture is gonna be unbearable. Cream foundation, powder, 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 cream, liquid. It's gonna look like, I don't know, it's gonna look like a smashed up birthday cake. <laughs> See, it's I in terms of the eye makeup, it's not the worst we've seen. Um, it's not terrible, 
The best part of this makeup is the eyebrows. The skin texture is not good. It is not good. There's a lot of gray going on there as well. This is why we have to bear in mind, if you are a makeup artist, I know it's really difficult to say, just spend money. But if you are charging people for makeup, you need to be able to cater to their skin tones, their shades, have enough variety that your work doesn't look like this. Yeah, all right, we'll leave it there. You can see the full video down below in the description box. I'll link it there for you. Go and check it out because a lot more happens than what you've seen in this video. Please do subscribe, give this video a thumbs up right now, right while you're here. And you can see some more reaction videos here on screen as well. I will see you very, very soon, bye.